what we've been seeing in Australia is a very quick uptake of LED technology over traditional technologies like compact fluorescent lamps and halogen. But where the value add will come in with is the new technology in controls, the interconnects between fittings and what the fittings can do as far as talking to each other and talking to the people in the room. The Internet of Things is not defined yet and I think people are taking from it their own interpretations. My interpretation of the Internet of Things is uh, the prediction that John Gunton from Dynalite made 30 years ago that everything will have a chip in it, everything will be intelligent and they'll be able to talk to each other. The uh, killer apps that will come with it we can't see yet but I would imagine that it will be things that give us greater flexibility and convenience from uh, devices talking to each other. We find our client base is looking for robust controls. They want controls that are intuitive with their luminaires and they want it to be seamless. They want it to be able to work even when the Wi-Fi goes down and this is where a lot of the current control systems I think have a gap in it that if it's totally reliant on Wi-Fi or high degree electronics they find that they're having a technician at the premises monthly. So we need to have backup controls, I think, for wireless type interface. My experience really with, with lighting controls and, and the intelligence of lighting controls is that it needs to be really simple. It doesn't matter how complicate, com complicated technology behind the, the controls is, but for, for me as an as a operator, as a user, for my clients, for my end users, it needs to be simple. A wall switch with maybe some intelligence behind it. Right now the trend is driven by the smartphone because it's in everybody's pocket. But of course you want the simplicity of a, of a light switch in the future. And, and they'll just work together. You, you'll, 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 you'll use your app for one thing and you'll use your, your wireless light switch for another. For us as a manufacturer what we are seeing is um, that when, since the LED came in um, there are a lot more opportunities and especially with now the Wi-Fi that's coming up, so independent luminaires that can communicate with each other. If you're able to avoid uh, 1 to 10 volt wiring, for example, by using independent sensors that just switch the luminaire on and off when uh, a certain lux level is reached, I, I see massive um, opportunities in, in that field. I think most of these smart light controls are mostly targeted at commercial projects. It's very difficult to, to actually bring that into residential projects because one of cost uh, and uh, installation and, and not so user friendly. And it's better to have like a standardized thing so people can find it easier to use and more acceptable in that sense. We still want the switch on the wall, but we also want, when we can't reach that switch or it's inconvenient, we want the system to understand that and, and take over. What we don't want is things on iPhones because I'm 60 years old. I've got to the stage where I've forgotten where I put my iPhone in the house. So the house is going to be in the dark until I remember where my iPhone is. I think the Australian market has an opportunity to uh, take on what consultants are putting forward as ideas and bringing forward the concepts of new technology and smart systems. So it's up to us as an industry to be advocates and put forward our concepts, the ideas and the new technology for our, uh, our customer base to take on.